In this video, I want to take a look at deriving the SUVAT formulae. Now, what I'm going to do here to start with on the first page is actually give the five formulas that you need to be familiar with, so the formulae. And then on the next page, I'm going to show how you actually derive those results. Now, it's worth mentioning that you don't actually have to memorize these results. They are given in the formula book, so it's not like you have to worry about memorizing them, but you do need to know how to derive these results if you are doing the full A level. If you're only doing AS maths, so you're only doing the first year of study, then you don't have to worry um, about actually deriving these results. Okay. So like I said, I'm going to start here by just giving the five equations that you need. So the first one here is V equals U plus A T there. Okay, so that's the first equation that we need. The next equation here is S equals, it's going to be U plus V, so U plus V, all over 2, and then we times that by T. Okay. The next result here, so again, it's going to be S equals, so we've got U T plus a half a t squared there, okay? My next result again is s equals, so I've got s equals here, v t, and then I've got v t minus a half a t squared, like so. And then finally, my last equation here is gonna be v squared is equal to u squared plus two a s, okay? So those are the formulas that we need. Like I said, they are given in the formula book, so you don't have to worry about memorizing them. Sometimes you might see the results given with a factor of a half on the outside, rather than kind of like how I've presented it here. They are just equivalent, just a different way of writing it. Okay, but just so you're aware of that. So those are the results that we need. Let's take a look now at how we actually derive these results. Now, in order to prove these results, we need to use a velocity time graph. And what I've got here is an example of what we're going to use to actually derive these results. So what we want to think about here is a particle, for example, that's moving along a straight line with constant acceleration. Okay, and there's a few things we need to note here from our velocity time graph. Now, what you'll notice straight away is our horizontal axis here, our x-axis is in time, and I'll say that's in seconds here. And our y-axis here is for velocity. Okay. Now, in this case, you can also see two other things here. We've got u here, which what that represents is our initial velocity. So u here, that's the initial velocity. So let's just make a note of that here. That's the initial velocity. And what we also have here is v. And v here represents the final velocity. And there's a quick point to make here as well, is we can actually see that my graph kind of extends a little bit more. So what I want you to do is just ignore that. So let me just make a note of that here. So ignore that the graph um, or the straight line here carries on. Think about that being where the particle stops. Okay, that's our final bit of motion there. So our final velocity here is v. Okay, and that stops at time t here. Okay, so t seconds. So at t equals zero, our initial velocity is u. Then when we arrive, um, or when our particle stops, we have our final velocity of v here. Okay. So from this velocity time graph now, what can we actually deduce here? Well, we should be familiar with the idea that the gradient of this line here, okay, the gradient of this line here would give us the acceleration. Okay, so gradient of line would give us the acceleration. And the way we represent the acceleration here is just using little a. Okay, so that's going to give us little a. So I want to work out now the gradient of this line here to get a. So how do we work out the gradient of this line here? Well, what I'm going to do is think about this as a triangle now. So clearly, the gradient here of this line will be my change in y over my change in x. Okay. So what's the change in y here? Well, that would be v minus u. So it's going to be v minus u. So that's going to give me my change in y. What about the change in x? Well, that's going to be t minus 0. Okay, which would just give me t there. So in that case, then, for the gradient of this line here, it's going to be v minus u all over t there, okay? So that gives us the gradient of the line there, which is the acceleration. And from here now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rearrange this, okay? I'm gonna make v the subject here. And what this will actually do is give us our first SUVAT equation, okay? So I'm gonna times through by t. If I get at is equal to v minus u. And therefore, if I add u to both sides, I get the result here, v equals u plus a t there, okay? And that's equation one there. 
And what you'll notice is, like we said, that's our equation one there. So that's equation one done. So we'll give that a tick. So if we come back over here now. How do we get the next equation? Well, there's one more thing we can deduce here from our velocity time graph, and that's the area underneath this straight line here, the shaded region, that would give us the displacement. Okay. So the displacement here, well, we use little s to represent that. Okay, so the displacement here is equal to little s. And there's two ways of working out the displacement here. Okay, what I've got is a right angle triangle. So what I can do is work out the area of this right angle triangle, and then work out the area of this rectangle here and add those together. That would give me my displacement. Or what I can do more simply here is just work out the area of this trapezium. Okay, and that's the method I'm going to use here to work out the displacement of S. So my displacement here, S, like we said, that's going to be the area of this trapezium. So that's going to be a half times by the base here. If that's what you want to think about, or the height, depending on how you're looking at this trapezium. So that's going to be T here along the bottom. So I get half times T, so I get a half T. Now I need to times that by the sum of the parallel um, heights here, or lengths, depending on how you think about that again. So this one here, that would simply be u. It's going to be at half t times u plus, and then I need this length here, this other parallel length, which in this case will be from 0 to v. So that's going to be um, v there. Okay. So plus v. And what I'm going to do now is just put this into a more familiar form, which is actually our equation 2 here. So this is actually technically correct, but the way I've presented it on the previous page is u plus v. So u plus v all over 2, and then we times that by t. Okay, and notice that gives us equation 2 there, and we'll give that a tick here. So u plus v over 2 times through by t. Okay, and that gives us s there. So, that's the first two SUVA equations that we need to derive. How do we get the remaining three results here? Well, the next three results now are just given using these two that we've derived here. Okay. So these are really important. You need to be able to kind of show these results straight away using the velocity time graph. And now the remaining three results just come from using these two equations. So how do we do this? Well, what I'm going to do here is take equation one and just substitute that into equation two. That would give me my next equation. Okay, so if I substitute v equals u plus at to equation two, I'm going to get my third SUVAT equation. And then we're going to repeat that two more times. But all we're going to do then is just change um, equation one here, make u the subject and make t the subject, okay? So like we said, let's just start by subbing equation one into equation two. So sub one into equation two here. So we start by doing that here, but v is equal to u plus at. What I'm gonna get here then is s is equal to u plus v here, which is u plus at. So I get u plus u plus at. This is all over 2, and then I times this through by t, okay? So at this point here, now this is just a matter of simplifying this, so I'm going to get 2u plus at, so 2u plus at, all over 2, okay? And we times this through by t. If we simplify here with this fraction, so this division by 2, I'm going to get 2u over 2, which is just u. So I get u, I then get at over 2, so at over 2, and we're timesing all of this through here by t. So in that case, then, if we multiply through now by the t here, what I get then is ut, so I get ut plus a half at squared, so plus a half at squared there, okay? And notice that gives us our result there for equation 3. So that's equation 3 there. We give that a tick and then we just go back one and we can give that a tick there. So s is equal to ut plus a half at squared. So that's equation one, equation two, and equation three. Let's take a look now at finding equation four. So what I'm gonna have to do now is clear the screen. Like you see, we've run out of room. Um, it is quite a bit of work here. So do take a note of this if you haven't already got it or take a picture. So let's take a look now at how we derive equation four. So like I said, I'm going to need to kind of put equation 1 and equation 2 back up here. So u plus at. And then equation 2 here, which is s is equal to u plus v all over 2. And then we times that by t. Okay, so equation 1 
and equation two there. Now, like we said, all we're doing here is um, substituting equation one into equation two. Now we substitute that when v was equal, all I'm going to do now is just rearrange to make u the subject and t the subject. Okay. So if I make u the subject here, I get u is equal to v minus a t there. Okay. I'm now going to substitute this here into equation two. So in that case, we get s is equal to u, which is v minus a t. So v minus a t plus v. This is all over two. And I times this now by t. Okay. So again, we need to simplify here. V plus V would give me 2V. We get 2V minus AT. And that's all over 2 there. Okay. And we times this through by T again. So again, it's just a matter of simplifying this, times it through by T, and then just put it into the correct form. Well, 2V over 2, that would give me V. We get V there. And then I'm going to get minus a half AT. So minus a half. A t and we times all of this here by this t on the outside. So once we then multiply through by the t here, so this is s equals, I'm going to get v t, so we get v t minus a half, so minus a half a t squared, okay, like so. And that gives us the result there of equation four, so that's equation four there, again just to show that here, that's my equation four, give that a tick. We move on to the last one here. So v squared is equal to u squared plus 2as. So proving this last result here, again, all I need to do now is rearrange. And this time I'm going to make t the subject of equation 1. So in that case, I'm going to get t is equal. That would be v minus u. So v minus u. And then we divide through by a. So t is equal to v minus u all over a. And what I'm going to do now is substitute t equals here into equation 2. So mathematically, nothing too challenging, but probably the, challenge, uh, the most challenging here to actually manipulate. But again, this is pretty much just GCSE math, so it shouldn't be too challenging. So let's have a go at doing this. So where do we begin? Well, I've got t equals here. So I'm just going to replace my t here with this result here. So in that case, I get s is equal to u plus v all over 2. Put this in a bracket here. And then we times it by t, which is v minus u over a. I get v minus u all over a there. <clears throat> so where do we begin? Well, the first thing I want to do here really is get rid of these fractions, okay? Because clearly I need to multiply through here, but I don't really want to have this denominator here of 2a. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to times through straight away by 2a. So in that case, then what I'm going to get here is 2as, I get 2as, is going to be equal to u plus v, so u plus v times v minus u there, okay? Now from here, what you will hopefully notice is I've actually got the difference of two squares here, okay? So there's 2as, let's take that up here. So I've got 2as is equal to u plus v times v minus u. This is just the same as v plus u times v minus u. Okay, so you might not notice it at this point here, but once I write it like this, you should notice now we have the difference of two squares. So what I can do then is write this now as 2as is equal to v squared minus u squared, because it's just simply the difference of two squares there. And from here now, we just want to make v squared the subject. So to do that, all I need to do now is add u squared to both sides. So in that case, we get v squared is equal to u squared plus 2as there. And there we have it. That's our last result we wanted to prove. And we'll note that here. That's my result. And that gives me equation 5 there. Okay. And there we have it. So that's all five results um, derived there. Like you see, there is quite a bit of work for this. And, you know, it's, it's one of them where you're not going to get asked to prove each result individually on an exam. But you do need to know how to derive each one individually. Okay, so like I said, key point here is that you can derive equation 1 and equation 2 using a velocity time graph. And from there, equation 3, 4, and 5, it's just a matter of substituting equation 1 into equation 2 and then just simplifying. Okay, but there we have it. So that's equation 5. That gives us our solution there. And that brings us to the end of this video on deriving the SUVAT formulae. 
In the next video, we're going to take a look at some exam revision and some exam style questions for Suvat equations and constant acceleration.